Yo, what's going on YouTube? It is Shabs and welcome to another special video and another formation review on this channel. So the last formation that we actually reviewed was the 4231 wide. Uh, and I rarely ever review formations unless I know I'm 100% credible on it and I've used the formation for at least 150 games in total. So for this formation, we have exactly done that. And the formation I'm talking about, obviously, that you're going to see on screen is the false nine, aka the 433 fifth variation. A formation that is rarely used in FIFA 17 Ultimate Team, which I think is criminally underrated, and a formation that will suit many, many weekend league players and FUD Champions players, especially if you're a formation based, a, a possession based player. If you like the whole possession, you know, pass the ball well, have good build up play, maybe a little bit of tiki taka here and there, then this formation will probably work for you as well as it did for me. Um, you know, for me personally, I was struggling a lot in FIFA Ultimate Team, especially FUD Champions, finding out a formation to use, you know. Oh man, the pros use this formation, the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow, but then some pros use the 4-3-1-2. Uh, you gotta do the pro swap, the 4-3-2-1. Uh, I need to have good counter attack, I need to have high speed. None of it worked for me. None of it worked for me at all, especially I even used Ronaldo, you know, I used the Messi's of the world, I used the uh, Del Piero's of the world, and although they're all fantastic players, amazing players, no team has worked for me as well. Or, and no formation has worked for me as well as the team you're seeing on screen and the formation you're seeing on the screen So guys, we're gonna just get into it right away We're gonna start off with the kind of players you need and where to spend your coins and that kind of thing So in goal you want to use somebody that you trust as in any formation. I trust David De Gea I love David De Gea six foot four acrobatic. I trust him. He has long throw traits So it really helps me out try to get a goalkeeper that has the long throwing trait because you can catch them on the counter very easily with your wingers in the false nine defensively your center backs you want to have a duo that you trust once again no specific people that need to be in it uh preferably you want to have a center backs that can pass the ball well because you're going to be using a lot of you're going to be using all your players in the formation for your build up uh but i just winston reed is too good for me so small and i don't care about their passing to be honest um but if you want to help yourself with your build up play sometimes they make bad passes to be honest um but yeah i'm okay with that i'm okay with them making a couple of errors out of 20 30 games but that's just how it is your wing backs guys you want to be using either two all-around wingbacks or one offensive wingback and one defensive wingback. So for me, I'm using Alessandro Florenzi, who as you can see is an all-around wingback, and Marcos Alonso, all-around wingback as well, but more, more so he's more of a defensive kind of guy. But I also consider him an all-around wingback, so that's what you want to use. Or you can use, obviously, like I said, one offensive, one defensive mid by minor wingback. Some that come to mind for all around are Kyle Walker and Alexandro. Some that come to mind for the offensive type are Bayarin, Alaba, those kind of guys. Jordi Alba, they like to push up a lot. Um, and then for your central midfielders, guys, this is where you want to spend the bulk of your coins. Your two central midfielders. Because not only are they going to bomb up and down the pitch, but they're going to score the majority of your goals. They're going to uh, set up the majority of the goals on your team. And they're going to be the majority of the players that are going to be tackling the ball, winning you the ball back. They are vital. As you can see, I have Paul Pogba, 600,000 coins. But look at those stats. 14 goals, 9 assists in 30 games. Bro, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that all day of the week. And then I got this beauty, Raja Nainggolan. Guys, I got a special video of the Ultimate Fuckcats coming out for Raja Nainggolan. Don't worry about that. 836,000 coins for a central midfielder. But this guy is the best in the game, in my opinion. No player have I have used this better. And I believe his price is going to skyrocket. Right now, it's 880. I just think when the weekend league comes up, he is going to skyrocket. Because the one coming up is just BPL, you know, the stipulation for after this week. But once it's back to normal, I think he'll be a 1 million coin player at least. At least. So those are the players that you want to use in such a midfielder, guys. You want to use one player that is a creative midfielder, that it has high medium work rates, preferably, or even medium low works as well. And then one midfielder that's a box to box, to buzz around the midfield, be all over the pitch, win the ball back. Be defensively, get those nice tackles in, but also go up the pitch, pass the ball, get in space, long shots, create. He has to be a high, high work rate midfielder. Like I've, I, I can't stress this enough. One midfielder has to be that box to box guy. He has to have high, high work rates. No midi medium. Midi medium does not work in this formation. Trust me, I've used it for 150 games plus. On the other side, you want to have medium low or, or high medium. They both work well, but just make sure you have the right balance for these two spots. And then your CDM, you want to have a guy like Conte. 80 pace, 80 physical, and 80 defending is probably as perfect as it gets. Preferably, you want someone taller than 5'7 to win you the headers like Nemanja Matic probably. But the things Conte does, and you want to have high passing. He can pass the ball really well. 
and occasionally he has to be able to finish in the box. He has to be a little bit clinical because they seem to push up a little bit. Conte does maybe once every five matches he pushes up and he's in the box and I finish with him easily because Conte I, I trust Conte, but you know you want to use a guy that's that either has low high or or medium high work rates. Um, anything else doesn't work. Medium medium does not work. They just seem to be out of position. Medium high or low high works. Good players in this position would be Gary Medal, Conte, Patrick Vieira. These are all the type of players you want to use in that position. Moving on, guys, your attacking trio. So, starting off with your wingers, they must have high attacking work rates. Nothing else works. If it's high, high, you know, it's doable, but preferably you want high, medium, or high, low work rates for your wingers. And they must have, you know, good pace. Great pace is actually better. Great finishing, great dribbling, and great passing. Because a lot of times your wingers in the false nine are going to be bombing down the pitch, doing a little bit of a skill move or a dribbling, and then passing in, in, into your center mids or into your center forward. They have to have great passing or else this is just not going to work. Obviously, the better the skills, the, the higher the skill moves, the better. The higher the, the work rates, the better. You know, high-low is probably the best. Also, the better the dribbling, the better it is for you. The better they finish, the better it is for you. You know, uh, but if you want to get a wingers and you're like, I don't know what stats I want exactly, high pace. High passing, high dribbling, and high finishing is probably what you're looking for. Those are the top four stats, I would say, in my opinion. And then, last but not least, to finish it off, your central forward. The guy that makes it all glue together and gel together. You want to preferably have a player that is a striker, but he can pass the ball. You know, because he has to be able to get in space, get in behind, and finish, and be clinical. Um, he can't be a guy like, like uh, let's say, Kevin De Bruyne. Because Kevin De Bruyne... Doesn't always be in position. He's not always in position in the false nine. Not only that, but but his, he seems to lack in finishing. He does have five star recoil, but his pace is really bad. He just doesn't feel like a player for the false nine. You have to more preferably use a striker in this position because he has to be able to mus muscle people off the ball as well. And I just think Zlatan is the best player for this position. Um, I wrote some things down, guys. You want to have high physical for your center forward. Four star weak foot and four star skill moves at least. I cannot stress this enough. At least. They have to be able to skill. They have to be able to pass it with both feet. If they can't, you're screwed. You're honestly screwed and it won't work for you. Medium low work rates are the best for this position, but also high medium works just as good in my opinion. But medium low just a little bit better, but high medium works just as well. Medium medium is uh, iffy, but you'll get away with it anyways. Some perfect players in this position, guys. Zlatan, Inform Firmino, second Inform or third Inform Ericsson, SBC Payet, Leno Messi, Bar camp is amazing in that position. Del Piero. You have a lot of options. Pick and choose how you like, but that's the kind of players you want in this formation. So guys, we don't want to make this video any longer. Let's get on to the custom tactics you want to use for this formation. So as you know, it is a slow build-up play formation. A, a formation that's going to have you favored on the possession side of things. Um, and basically, I have 25 speed and 25 passing for my build-up play. And keep it organized. Some people like to use the free form on false nine. If you are comfortable with your defensive play, you can do that. But I'm not that confident yet. So I'm gonna keep it unorganized. Um, why do you want it to have low seed though? Because you want your players to be close to closer together. You don't want them to make ridiculous runs and be risky because it doesn't favor the false line. The false line favors uh, short passes, you know, one two one two touches, and then and then finding someone in space, uh, making runs like your wingers will. And 25 25 seems to work very very perfect for me in my opinion. Then your passing, crossing, shooting 20 20 20, um, and free form. So this also favors the false nine because, as you know, it's a slow build-up formation. So you're not going to be making any ridiculous runs for the passes. Uh, you know, you're not going to be re making ridiculous runs into the box for crosses and ridiculous runs to to get into scoring positions. Um, this is not a counter-attack based formation, so you don't need you don't need passing, crossing, or shooting to be that high, which is why 2020 really favors the slow build-up play with the 25-25. They really were well together, and then obviously for the false line especially, you want free form. You want your midfielders because your center mids are going to score the majority of your goals. You want them to get into the play. You don't want them to just you don't want them to just stick in their position, get in and play as a center forward, and then come back as a CDM. You know that's how it works really. And then defense. Uh, this is probably the best custom tactics I've used, and I actually pulled it off of Reddit. Um, you can use it. You can play around with it how you want. You know, tweak little things here and there to kind of make it work well in your favor. Pressure thirty. I think it works the best because you don't want to be you don't want to be um, pushing up the line, uh, pushing up your def defensive line because then your players are gonna get in behind very easily, and you'll get counterattacked a lot because your wingbacks are gonna get into the play. You don't want that to happen. Aggression forty seems to work well <clears throat> when they cross your half line. You don't want to double everybody. You want to stay composed defensively and just wait for you for you to intercept the ball. 
team width, 47 seems to work fine, 50 is even okay, I, I also tried 45 and 40. They all work the same to my, in my opinion, but I'm just going to keep it at 47 because that's what worked the best for me. That's the one that got me the most, the most amount of wins and results. Cover, you know how it is, you want, also always, always want to cover it. And then last but certainly not least, uh, before we get into some last ditch tips for you guys, the player instructions. So, player instructions that I use that work the best for this formation. Wingbacks, surprise, surprise, balanced. Even sometimes you want to do it, always overlap. Because in this formation, like I said, it's a balanced formation and every single person on the pitch is vital in your build-up play. Your wingbacks, why would you, why, let, them lo let them lose, as the Redditor said on Reddit. Let them fly loose. Why would you want to limit their ability to get in space, to make passes, to make runs? Their overlap, lap and runs, obviously, honestly, always help your attack very well. It makes it even more dangerous. You're not always susceptible in the counter-attack, but if you're not that good defensively, you will be susceptible, you know? I almost always have three people back, at the very least. Uh, mo almost always four, because nine goal on always bombs back. I'm fine. If you have good midf midfielders, you will be fine as well. Keep it on balance. And then, obviously, stay back while attacking for your center backs. CDM, this is what this is iffy. A lot of people like to put aggressive interceptions, but I think that just kills their stamina and it, and it just puts them out of position. So I just like to keep it on normal. Stay back while attacking, obviously, and then cut passing lanes. You don't want man mark, you want cut passing lanes, or even balanced. I've used both. Balanced, um, I don't feel that safe defensively because I want them to intercept the ball even when I'm not controlling them, which is why I want cut passing lanes, which is what this formation is really good at. Um, but yeah, keep it on cut passing lane if you're going to take it from me, but use it to your advantage however you want to use it. CMs, balanced, do what you got to do, boo-boo. I'm not going to touch with your with your instructions. Just bomb up and down, create offense, that's all I need. Wingers, stay forward, cut inside, again behind. Stay forward, cut inside, get in behind. It's really simple. You want them to stay forward. You want them to, want them to come back on defense. You want them to cut inside and get in behind to get into the box to make the runs as strikers, as if strikers would, pretty much. Center forward, stay central, false nine. That's it, boys. Don't press the back line. No interceptions. That's it. And guys, this is basically the the full review for the false nine. Some last ditch tips for you guys as well. Spend most of your coins on your central midfielders. Those are the most important players on your team. Your CMs. I have Pogba and second in from Nangolan. Spend. I would say if you have like hundred thousand coins, spend sixty thousand coins on two CMs and then the rest on your team. Seriously. Um, yeah, they are your most important, but if you're, if you're looking for a, for a ranking, like a pyramid of what's more important, first spend your coins in your center mids, once you've upgraded that to your full civil ability, move on to your center forward, because that's the that next important piece, and then move on to your wingers. Those are the most important in the pyramid kind of way, uh, players on your team. Then, uh, obviously CDM is important, but I just feel like there are so many cheap and good options that you don't need to worry about the price on that. And then, lastly, but certainly not least, you can't have any weak links in your squad. If there are any weak links, this formation will not work. Because remember, this formation is balanced. Every player matters. Every single player matters. You cannot have a weak link. If there's any weak link on your team that you don't trust, that you don't feel comfortable with, out of here. Booyah. Get the hell out of my team and upgrade him or change him. You know, if you have any weak links that you're not comfortable with, you will screw up. Trust me, it'll bite you in the, you know what. Um, but yeah, boys, that is about it for this formation guide, guys. Let me know if you're going to try the formation out and how it works for you. I absolutely love it. If you're a possession-based player, you will love it as well. Again, let me know what you guys think. Subscribe for daily content. Leave a like on the video. Share it with your friends that want to use the new formations that they're struggling with in FUT Champions. But I'll see you guys next time.